If you like Windwalker Monk and don't want to be like that guy when doing your raids and dungeons, then stick around for the 8 point free guide on Windwalker as we go through talents, gear, essences, rotation, corruption, and a whole lot more to get you started on the right track. But first, the talents. Hey! For single target, the default pick on the first row is Eye of the Tiger, as this will enable your Tiger Palm to apply a dot dealing nature damage over 8 seconds while also healing you for the same duration. Chi Wave could also work as it can bounce to the same target 7 times, so you always get the full use out of it unless all targets die before it's done bouncing, which is not likely. It still works, don't get me wrong, but the safe pick will always be Tiger. For AoE scenarios, you always pick Chi Burst, as this will launch a straight wave of Chi energy towards your enemies, dealing damage and healing folks that are in the way. It also generates 1 Chi per target hit to a maximum of 2. You cannot go wrong with this. Second row provides mobility. You know what that is, right? Paladins? DKs? Who's with me? No, but seriously, the default pick on the second row is Tiger's Lust, as apart from getting you out of slows and roots and bumping your speed to 70%, this can be used on friendlies also, especially when your friends are Death Knights. They will love you for it, but hey, if you feel you already have enough mobility as it is, you can always try out Celerity or Chi Torpedo as this row is usually down to personal preference anyways. Don't forget about your DK and Paladins friends though. On the next row, there is only one thing very clear. Do not take Energizing Elixir. That being said, the default pick will be Fist of the White Tiger and this is purely because of the joy of having an extra ability to press and a small margin of DPS increase when compared to Ascension, which is also pretty valuable, especially as this becomes useful once you have the necessary traits on your Windwalker Monk. Open palm strikes and such, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Fourth row brings you good karma for raiding, enabling your touch of karma to redirect 100% of the damage taken during its duration back at the target. It's very useful during heavy raid damage such as the last moments of obsidian skin on Maut or during the psionic resonance cast in the hive mind. For dungeons, the default pick will be Ring of Peace, one of the best goddamn abilities in World of Warcraft, period. This one has lots of uses, but mainly it will help your tank get rid of necrotic stacks or just plainly protect him if the healer is having a hard time because toilet devastation went further down the road and pulled some extra mobs. On the defensive's row, Diffuse Magic will be a solid pick for raids as Nyalotha has a lot of magic damage going around. That being said, Diffuse Magic will help mitigate that by 60% for 6 seconds while also transferring any harmful magical effects back to the target that casted them in the first place. For dungeons, there is a lot more physical damage to worry about, especially during skittish picks, so Dampen Harm will be the one for you here. It can reduce the damage you take starting from 20% and up to 40% depending on how hard the hits are. Coming up is the 6th row and hit combo takes the cake for basically your situations. It's a permanent 6% damage increase as long as you never hit the same ability twice because you see my friend, this talent gives you 1% extra damage for each individual and separate hit you do, stacking up 6 times. This ties in gorgeously with your mastery which increases the damage of all your abilities as long as they are not casted twice. Ah, I just love a good synergy. If you really want to have the biggest burst single target damage you can have, Xuan also is pretty viable in that department. That or up to 3 target burst, but if you're looking for that sustain, stick to hit combo. And now time for the last talent. Whirlwing Dragon Punch is the default by a large margin for all types of content. Apart from yet another extra button on your action bar, this delivers great damage both single target and cleave, but it only becomes available while Fists of Fury and Rising Sun Kick are on cooldown, so be wary of that. And yo, we love helping you understand these classes and get better at the game, so how about helping us out with a like? It's all you have to do and it takes one second to do so. Go ahead, like the video. I'm waiting.
Okay, now let's talk about the statue one for Windwalker. As with all DPS classes, the first thing you need to do... Sim yourself! Now that must be something you never heard before, right? Especially on our guides. Nah, but really, stats will change depending on the gear you have. But if you cannot be bothered with simming, here's a little breakdown of the uh, so-called default ones. Agility is king as it will provide more and more attack power, thus high item level is always preferred no matter what. Well, that is if that 420 piece has a rank 3 infinite stars, then you can forget about the atom level. <laughs> Great design, eh? Then you want versatility, purely for the added damage, to be placed on top of your mastery and hit combo talent. Followed up by critical strike, with the actual mastery stat being more or less on the same tab as crit. Haste can also play a role here, but your main concern should always be versatility. Now, do take note that mastery tends to lose its value depending on what corruption and azurite traits you are using. The more damage you get from those, the less mastery you will want. As such, for your ring enchants, you want the Accord of Versatility and Versatile Dark Opal, and if you're still gearing up and not yet at a 450 item level, a Leviathan Eye of Agility can be placed in one of your sockets, no problemo. Your weapons shall follow the same rule here, with versatile navigation on your main hand and a deadly navigation one for those juicy versatility and crit procs. Greater flask of the currents will be your best choice as far as flasks go and superior battle portion of agility being the best out there for potions. For dinner time, feast is the top option, when it's available of course, but if you're like me, and can't really afford it or nobody's providing, then look to stack up for some build tongue to further increase your versatility. Moving in directly to traits, open palm strikes is the very best you can have for both raiding and dungeons. It will increase the damage of your main DPS ability, Fists of Fury, while also having a 5% chance to refund one chi. The chance will not stack, but the damage will, making it the only trait you need to work towards stacking three times. Dance of Chi becomes the choice anytime there's a second target to hit, even for a little bit. Fury of Xuan and Glory of Dawn can be used in the last spots for excellent single target purposes, but if you cannot get hold of those, Heart of Darkness is also a great choice once you pass 25 corruption. For AoE, you maintain three open palm strikes as mentioned earlier and Dance of Chi once again as this will have a chance to give you a free spinning crane kick with added damage on top of it. Having two of these is sufficient, as once again, the damage addition will stack. Alright, essence time! For single target and raids in general, blood of the enemy will be your main bread and butter, as upon using it, your crit values go through the roof and naturally your damage should too. You will probably see a lot of monks running conflict and strife, and yes, this seems the best but it is nearly impossible to use at its maximum power, thus why it's not recommended here as we are trying to focus on a more beginner-friendly approach. Now, if you cannot get blood of the enemy, then Breath of the Dying can also deliver great and even Crucible of Flame, which you should have by now at rank 3. For dungeons, the minor essences don't change that much, as blood of the enemy major takes the cake once again as the uh, active ability will spread the damage to enemies in 12 yards and we already talked about the insane amount of crit value you get for and from all those mobs getting hit by it. If this isn't available as an alternative, you can always rely on Focus and Iris for that on-demand AoE burst. It is true that most of the best essences for you and your monk are coming from PvP content and if you don't like that, well, you should! At least, do it for your Windwalker, man. It's really good in arenas right now. That being said, there are a lot more things to cover when it comes to essences. And this being a beginner guide, you should 100% check out the Peak of Serenity Discord and website for much, much more in-depth information. And now, moving on to trinkets. Remember that nice lady from Eternal Palace? That graceful angel moving subtle and beautiful. People here. Keep it in the circus! You know, this place has gone way downhill. What do you say we go somewhere else? That's a huge bitch! <laughs> well, she drops the best trinket still for you, and that is Ashvane's Razor Coral. We talked about this trinket on a lot of melee specs. 
It is suffice to say, you want this because it's a crit machine and crit is very good for you. It shouldn't be too hard to get as there are still groups being made exactly for these items. So be on the lookout for them, it'll be worth it. Lustrous Golden Plumage is another great trinket you should be working towards as it has a massive load of unused versatility paired up with a flat agility gain. Either this or the Corrupted Gladiator's Medallion being obtainable in week 4 of your arena PvP cap. For AoE, we can finally touch on some Nihilothian influence with Torment in a Jar that drops from Xanesh. It performs really well in Mythic Plus, pumping serious shadow damage to mobs once its effects stack up. Harlan's Loaded Dice from Freehold retains its strong position as one of the best trinkets to have for you, like with many of the Pagility users anyways. If you are planning to use your Razor Coral in Dungeons 2, and there is no problem with that, I will once again explain the best usage of it. You should be putting it on a high health mob, letting the mob die to automatically trigger your stacks, then reapplying it to another high health mob. Sometimes you are aiming to build crit stacks in one pack to be used on the next. By letting the coral stacks activate when a mob dies, you can immediately put it onto a new mob without waiting for that 20 second cooldown. Now, this way is very effective but takes a bit of practice and focus to pull off. When talking about the weapons you can equip in 8.3, these usually have a deciding factor based on what corruption they provide, the raid ones. And the only one you can possibly go for is the Unguin Caress from Raden, although the Lash of the Void Corruption isn't the strongest one. It's okay, don't get me wrong, but Bilestain Croc Tusks from Underworld are still some of the best one-handers you can get. Great stats and great damage over time. Other pieces of gear have a chance to provide you with the best corruptions for Windwalker. So, you should be definitely looking to keep Infinite Stars as this is easily the best one to have in single target. Twilight Devastation is great for AoE mainly, even with the recent nerfs although it performs very good in Silga target also. As Babylonius put it, Windwalkers already have two strong abilities that scale with health. Why not add another one? Stat corruptions can also work, but do keep in mind that as a Windwalker monk, you're not going out of your way to stack one stat as much as possible, but uh, rather maintain a balance. So before deciding on stat corruptions, best to sim yourself first. For the opener, pre-pot 4-5 seconds before the pull. Flying Serpa Kick on the pull to keep that mastery and hit combo rolling. Then Tiger Paw, then Touch of Death, follow it up with Storm Earth and Fire, after this Rising Sun Kick, then Tiger Palm again, and now it's time for Fists of Fury, then Whirling Dragon Punch. For the single target priority, after the opener you have to follow this. Touch of Death is the first. Fist of the White Tacker if talented. Tiger Palm only if you're about to cap on energy and are below 4 chi. Whirling Dragon Punch then. Fist of Fury. Rising Sun Kick. And Blackout Kick. The priority for AoE scenarios changes a bit, but Touch of Death still remains on top. Then Whirling Dragon Punch. Follow this with Fist of Fury. Rising Sun Kick. This only to use Whirly Dragon Punch. Chi Burst, Spinning Great Kick, Fist of the White Tiger, if talented, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick to build Spinning Crane Kick Stacks, and finally fill in with Tiger Palm. When it comes to the rotation and priorities for Windwalker, there are a lot more things to consider and look to into, especially when taking into account trinkets and different essences. So I highly, highly recommend once again to check out the Peak of Serenity website and Discord with a special thanks to you, Babylonius, one of the best monks that ever did it. The author of the Windwalker Monk Guide on the Peak of Serenity website, I think he owns the website too, and also the guide on Wowhead. Windwalker is an absolute blast to play, one of the most rewarding specs in BFA currently and it performs decently. It has seen its ups and downs during the expansions, but man, if you've never picked it up, I'd recommend you shoot and with this guide, you'll be on your way. 
Now, all of these guides and videos and what we do over here cannot be made possible without the support from you lovely people, which are our patrons. Well, the patrons and the viewers, of course, but mainly the patrons because they decided to support us a little bit more in these uncertain times. So we want to thank you once again for everything that you do and you can make sure that all of your support goes into improving the quality and you know the the quality of the videos the quality of the information the quality of the research everything so we can be on point with everything we do like three videos per week two guides and a wow news show on every friday we have a lot of streams during the week and one during saturday so it's basically everything community driven also be on the lookout for the merch store it's linked in the description the teespring link we're gonna have a bunch of hand designed t-shirts over there for your pleasure it's gonna be pretty good it's gonna be a combination between graffiti and world of warcraft pretty cool other than that thank you so much for watching i wish you good health in these interesting times we're living in and enjoy your staying in home play wow see ya